Welcome back everybody, my name is Sucker, and in today's video we're going to be kind of having a discussion uh, about whether or not it's fair for NBA players to just straight up say that they don't want to play for a particular team when they're coming into the NBA, in the NBA draft, because there have been some rumors swirling around lately about some prospects in the 2020 NBA draft that straight up don't want to play for certain franchises, and honestly, I don't really blame them, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the first of today's videos. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every day. It's a great place for consistent NBA content, and I'm pushing towards 100,000 subscribers on this channel as well, uh, so if you want to sub, that would help me get towards that goal. You can also leave a like rating on the video it helps me uh, understand that you're enjoying this particular piece of content and it helps the video out a ton on youtube get out to more people you can also hang out with me outside of these videos at twitch.tv slash spolo underscore td it's pretty likely that i'm live right now by the time you're watching this i stream at least five times per week and you can also come hang out with me in the discord server as well we have a ton of active members in the discord talking about anything from sports to gaming to everything in between so if you want to hang out over there that would also be a good choice with that said let's go ahead and get started and talk about the idea of nba players saying no to particular teams drafting them in the nba draft and what got me thinking about this was the fact that there have been reports saying that james wiseman does not want to be drafted by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And James Wiseman is one of the more interesting prospects in this draft class as a guy that has very little college experience, played a handful of games at Memphis before some eligibility issues forced him uh, to just not participate anymore in college. And he's been training uh, you know, for the draft for longer than almost any other prospect in this class. And he's been in a bit of a similar situation to someone uh, like Mitchell Robinson in the past. They're not the same player by any means, but Mitchell Robinson is another guy that uh, just didn't really have a traditional college experience. And what makes Wiseman stand out in this particular draft is that, as I said, there have been rumors and reports that have pretty directly said that James Wiseman doesn't want to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And there's a couple of reasons for this that I don't really think that you can blame Wiseman for. First, of course, is the on-the-court fit there in Minnesota. Him and Carl Anthony Towns playing together would probably not be ideal for either one of them, despite Towns' ability uh, to stretch the floor at the five spot, something that has been, you know, one of his better skills over the last couple of years, his ability to space the floor so well at the five spot. That doesn't necessarily mean that pairing him with a more traditional five like James Wiseman uh, is a good idea by any means. So that fit not only stunts Wiseman's development, but it also, you know, just isn't good for Carl Anthony Towns either. And I don't anticipate the Wolves being interested in selecting James Wiseman with the first overall pick. If that was their plan, they would probably look to move down rather than taking him in number one. But then the other part of this, of course, is that the Golden State Warriors are sitting there at number two, and we don't know exactly who they're going to go with. There's been a lot of rumors swirling about who the Warriors could potentially be taking here. But if you're James Wiseman and you're looking at the situation objectively, you'd much rather go play in Golden State with Steph and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, Steve Kerr, a championship culture, a team that's going to be good next year, rather than Minnesota, where the fit not only isn't great, but you also have no idea if they're going to be any good next year. And none of the players on that roster really know what it's like to be on a consistent winning team in the NBA. So when you're looking strictly at their development, there's no reason why a particular player would not rather play in Golden State rather than Minnesota, unless you wanna make the argument that they won't have as many opportunities to grow and develop in Golden State because of the talent already on that roster, rather than in Minnesota, where maybe there's more opportunities to improve. But that brings in this whole different idea and discussion that I wanna talk about today of NBA players or just athletes in general having the ability to straight up say no to a particular team drafting them first or, or at any point in the NBA draft. And we've seen this in the past, right? We've seen this with particular players where they won't even work out with different teams. They won't even interview with different teams uh, in an effort to steer them towards either bigger markets or just away from certain teams. Now, for me, I don't really have any issue with this, and there's a couple of reasons. One, these players, once they decide to enter the NBA draft, have very little say over where they end up going. And a lot of the times where they end up going has a pretty, you know, a good amount to do with how their careers end up. Spoiler alert, this might be a future video coming this week or next week of players that probably wouldn't have been busts if they had gone to better scenarios. If you look back, there are a handful of players that if they had gone to, to a team that you know, had its stuff together a little bit better, 
they would have been in a much better situation for their career long term. And I don't really see any issue with players exercising their very limited ability to push themselves towards certain teams. Because at the end of the day, if, if there's a clear cut number one prospect in a draft and a team wants to take them and they don't want to go there, I, ultimately the team is either going to trade out of that or they're going to pick them and then trade them away later or try and get them to play. And so they can do as much as they can in terms of not working out for teams, not giving them medical information, not giving them interviews, but a team can pick them no matter what at the end of the day. And I don't really see an issue with a player saying, you know what, Minnesota, like you haven't done enough to to convince me that this is a great situation for myself. I mean, if, I, if I'm going into the NBA draft right now and you know, someone like the New York Knicks is at the, the number one spot, I'm not especially excited about that. Like playing in Madison Square Garden and playing for the Knicks, okay, that's fine. But from an organizational standpoint, I have zero confidence that that organization from a, from a competency standpoint is gonna be able to surround myself with the proper tools that I need to continue to grow and develop as a player. And then when you go back to like the Donald Sterling era LA Clippers, like they didn't have the proper facilities compared to the rest of the league. They were complete dumpster fire. And I know that at a certain point, like it's on players to, to overcome those things, to figure it out. And a lot of players throughout NBA history have really impressed people by their ability to just figure it out regardless of a situation that wasn't ideal. But if we're just looking at a blank slate situation, why shouldn't players be able to say, you know what? I don't wanna play here. I don't wanna play in Philadelphia. I don't wanna play in New York. I don't wanna play in Minnesota. I don't wanna play in Milwaukee. I don't really see anything wrong with that. Now, there are certain times where it's it's certainly not fair to the franchises, where there are players that just don't wanna play in certain markets for whatever reason. Uh, and that's obviously not good for the league because they wanna have, you know, they wanna have stars in their big markets, but they also wanna have stars for some of the other smaller market teams to keep the interest up throughout the league rather than on just a handful of teams. But just as a concept, I feel like there should be at least some responsibility on these teams to show a level of competence to where players actually want to play there. And you can transition this to, to other sports and things like that. But again, if you're looking specifically at teams like Minnesota that since the inception of the franchise, I believe have the worst winning percentage in the entire league or the pre-bubble Phoenix Suns that have won between 20 and 25 games for the last handful of years and have uh, you know, an owner that's not all that committed to winning. Like, I think those things should matter. And ultimately, if, if, if teams were punished more often for being that incompetent by players in the draft not wanting to play there, that would probably incentivize them more than almost anything else to be more competent as a franchise, to put together an organization that players actually want to play there rather than an organization that players just end up there by default because they have to end up somewhere. Now, I I respect both sides of this. Like if you think that it's it's not uh, the correct competitive mindset for a player to not go to a team that they're drafted to, then that's fine. Uh, and there's also, again, some situations in which this is unfair for particular teams. But for me personally, I have no issue with James Wiseman doing this. The, the Warrior situation is by far the better situation. And ultimately, you know, it might not even be that necessary because I think you can agree that it would be pretty unlikely that Minnesota would take him at number one given the needs of their roster. Uh, but just straight up a one-to-one -one situation, obviously the Warriors thing is, is a pretty unique circumstance given, you know, how good they've been over the last couple of years and then how their season went this past year. But for me, I have no issue with this whatsoever. If James Wiseman doesn't want to play in Minnesota and he lets them know that, for the most part, teams are, if it's pretty close on a prospect, like if they are pretty close on, on wanting LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards, rather than someone like James Wiseman, they're probably gonna go with the guy that actually wants to be there. So I think it adds another layer as well to the draft of interest of like, okay, this team is interested in this, but is the player interested in the team? I think that's an important consideration. Like it, it can't just be by default. Like so many other things about the first seven years of a rookie's career in the NBA are already by default when you consider Okay, you've got your four-year rookie contract if you're playing well and you know they accept both team options. And then for the most part, it makes zero sense to sign anywhere else as a restricted free agent. So then you're stuck there for seven years unless you request a trade or, or something happens. If you're a successful player, where you get drafted to is a huge, huge deal. And again, as we're gonna talk about in a future video about players that you know kind of became bust because of where they were drafted to. And I don't think that's something that should be taken lightly. I don't think that's something that should be entirely taken out of those players' hands either. So I completely believe in and respect those players' ability to say, you know what? You haven't done enough. You haven't done enough as a franchise to prove to me that this is a good situation 
and to treat it more like a free agency than a drafting situation. It, to, to as much as they are able to do that, I have absolutely no issue whatsoever. But as always, I'm interested to see what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. Do you think that players should be able to say no to NBA teams uh, drafting them at any point? in the draft. I'm curious to see what you guys think. But that is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.